All right. There's uh, another chapter I'm doing. It's called Growth and Trade. It's really cool. So, first, I'm going to talk about balance versus bias growth. As always, this PowerPoint is brought to us by Bernard West at Barry University, my professor. Balanced growth or a growth in a country's own production capability shifts the country's production possibility frontier or curve, whichever you want to call it, outward. New technologies, increase in resources available, increase in labor, all these things can actually shift the production possibility curve outward to expand your horizons. Now, growth is balanced if the production possibility frontier shifts out proportionally. Both if you're if you're going weed on the hor on the vertical axis and cloth on the hor on the horizontal one, an increase in both in technology will increase both of them proportionally the same amount. So there's no bias growth. Now um, this can occur if all factors are growing at a similar rate or because the technology makes it possible. What are factors that production that shift the PPC? Technology is most likely new available resources and abundance in land, which you just, I don't know how you make up land, but let's say they cut some forest down to make them, so you can make new homes. That's an increase in, ro in resources which you can use to expand your frontier. Now, bias growth. Bias growth is a growth in the uh, in your possi possibility frontier, which is skewed towards the towards the sector which you are more intensively using. To put it in simpler words, because the book does a really bad job of describing it. So, the growth that favors production in one sector more than the other one. So. If you're using wheat and cloth, for example, if uh, an enormous amount of laborers came into the um, into the manufacturing business, then you'll see your production possibility curve shift outward in your cloth sector, but not shift outward as much or little or none in your wheat sector. Bias growth can occur. If one factor is going faster than another one, or if the technology is improving for one sector more faster than in the other one. Now, there is something in, in one extreme case that only one pr product's curve on um, technology is improving, then the PPC intercepts with the other product's axis does not change. So it just remains the same. Here's three examples of balance, growth bias towards the cloth industry, and growth bias towards the wheat, and wheat um, production. There's actually a small country case, as I can just tell right now. I'll, t I'll explain to you guys right now. So, so this is um, the growth in a country's production um, capabilities, whether from endowment increase or te technological improvements shifts the country's production possibility curve outward. Um, as the production possibility curve shifts out, we are interested in knowing the effects on the general shape of the production possibility curve, whether it's on balance, biased to one side or biased to the other one, and the specific production quantities for the different products, if the product prices remain the same as their pre-growth values which is very important because if the values remain the same or the terms of trade remain the same they were dealing with a small country if the terms of trade or the price somehow changes then we know we're dealing with a large country case let's um, analyze the first one here we see that originally they, um, this country was consuming an S1 we have wheat in the vertical and cloth in the horizontal. So, at point S1, in the production possibility curve, there's the trade line. They wanted to trade at point C1, this is the indifference curve, where they ma maximize utility. So, at this point, they were exporting 40 
80 minus 40 is 40. They were exporting 40 units of wheat and importing 60 minus 40, 40 units of cloth. So there are actually the trade the terms of trade were 40 over 40, one to one. One unit of wheat per one unit of cloth. Makes sense. Now um something happened in the technology, the PPC curve shift outward. They're now um producing an S2. You draw the line 45 degree angle line right down and they would like to trade at C2 where the indifference curve is located. Um, now what are the terms of trade? 112 minus 56 is 56 and 28 minus 84 is 60 whoa let me see I did something wrong here 84 minus 28 is 56 I'm sorry 56 and 56 so um, the terms of trade are still the same 56 over 56 is one unit of wheat for one unit of cloth but they're better off because they're now trading 56 they're exporting 56 and importing 56 so the terms of trade have actually been made better off as consuming S S two C two. You can see that the terms of trade have not been altered since both trade lines are actually parallel to each other. Now um let's see the growth towards bias towards the cloth sector. Now here the technology or resources were made available more towards the laborer then the landlords talking in HO theory terms so you can see that there's clearly more growth down here so let's see how this works out um first they're consuming an s1 you draw the line and here they want to consume at this point which maximizes their utility and here they're trading 40 per 40 one to one now as the bias growth occurred they now shift it over here to S3. As you can see, the price of wheat didn't change at all. While the cloth actually went upward. 60 now, was, now will be 72. And before it was 20, now it's 40. So you can see the bias growth changed this, but didn't actually change anything towards the wheat sector. <coughs> So it'll be 80 minus 48 or 32 and 72 minus 40 or 32. So it's still one to one. Now here's the complete opposite. Here the growth um, actually occurred for the wheat sector little improvement for the cloth so you can see they were on first producing an S1 decided to, to trade a C1 which will be 80 and 40 will be 40 and 60 and 40 will be 40 one to one still you can see the pair of the parallel lines and so you can see it, since the cloth didn't actually move much the price still remains the same when they choose to consume an S4 although the wheat sector have gone from 80 to 130 or an improvement of 50 so here they want to consume a S4 and trade a C4 so it will be 60 minus 130 or 70 and 20 minus 90 will be 70 so the terms of trade have not altered one to one so all this is an example of a small country case now which growth scenarios lead to the greatest willingness of trade so um here we get we go from a 40 to a 70 here we went from a 40 to a 32 and here we went from a 40 
to a 56 so a bias growth towards the wheat industry will result in a higher willingness to trade and the less willingness to trade was the bias growth towards the cloth now in the next we'll analyze growth in only one factor 